This video is a sample from the Secret Guitar Teacher Interactive course, The Five Main Elements of Music. The Five Main Elements of Music Element number two, scales. Section 2.2, using the minor blues scales. Part seven, minor blues scale diagonal runs. We learn the blues scale patterns in five positions, memorizing the shape that each of those positions makes and learning the order of fingering that we need to apply for optimum efficiency when drilling the patterns. But the end result of all of this is to get to know the entire pattern across the whole length of the fretboard and to be able to freely and easily run around that pattern um, without ever needing to think. So you should eventually be able to pick any key, let's pick F sharp at random, and then cover the fretboard with the notes that form the minor blues scale in that key. You should be able to connect all the positions together in any number of ways. Finally, you should also feel free to better jump from one position to another on demand. First position, fourth, third, lower first, fourth, upper first, lower second. As we near the end of the first step of this process, the orientation stage, it may be useful to use an analogy to explain the thought process behind what we're doing. Think of the five positions, each as one page in a map book. We started out studying each of five separate pages of our road atlas. And once we have memorized sufficient detail we spent some time looking at how the pages interlink. For this final step, we're turning back to the start of the road atlas, to the page where they show you the big picture. And when we zoom in on this page, we can see that there are some major routes, highways, motorways, autobahns, whatever you want to call them, that offer faster and simpler ways of covering long distances. Similarly, when we look at the overall pattern made by connecting all the blue scale positions together, we can find some routes through that pattern that can be travelled at high speed with relative ease. These are what I call the minor blue scale diagonal runs. Diagonal because if you plot a line from start point to end point, the journey has taken you diagonally across the fretboard. In this lesson, we're going to look at four diagonal runs that you can use with the minor blues scale. The ascending three octave run, the descending three octave run, the ascending two octave run, and the descending two octave run. The ascending three octave run starts on the key note on the sixth string, so in effect it starts in the first position. Let's have a look at this using the key of G as an example. We play the six notes of the scale using normal fingering. But then we slide our first finger up into the second position to start the second octave. 
continuing with four and then one, two, three on the second string. I uh, beg your pardon, on the next string. And then we have a slightly tricky fingering adjustment. We can use the second finger on the second string, but then as we slide up into the third position, we switch back to the first finger like this. And then we can go four, one, two, three again before finishing with a jump up to the fifth position, ideally using fingers two and four. Though in some cases, you might find fingers one and three work better. It depends what you plan to happen next. Here's a diagram for the ascending three octave run showing the suggested fingering options. For the descending three octave run, we start where we just finished the ascending run, demonstrating it in the key of G again, and I suggest starting on the third finger. And we play the first six notes descending the fifth position like this. And then we slide down that G string with that third finger, fret 12 there, um, into the middle of the fourth position and we start working our way down the fourth position but on the D string we keep going down that same string with the first finger into the bottom end of the third position which we use up and then we transition to the little finger to complete in the first position. the diagram for this one. So the three octave run is a useful diagonal for most keys, but for some keys, the ones that start higher up on the fretboard from around about the key of B onwards, there's a second diagonal run that can come in quite useful as well, and that one starts on the fifth string. But that one only covers two octaves. Let's look at it in the key of B as an example. Here you can see the ascending run. There are other patterns you can take, but this is the one I find the smoothest. And it has the added advantage of being reversible. So for the descending run, we simply come back down the same route. So we're simply using the G string to slide up on there. One, four, one, two, three, one, one, four, one, two, three, one, three. Three, one, three, two, one, three, slide. the diagram to show that descending pattern. A good way to drill the diagonal runs is simply to work through each key and find as many of each of these runs as you can. So you might start with the key of E by finding the key note that is furthest down the fretboard, in this case the open E on the E string, and that means we can start with the three octave run. Ascending and descending. And then I'd look for the next E note up on the fifth string, finding it here, and I can play the um, two octave run from there. Up and back. On some guitars, you may be able to get another 
three octave run in from fret 12. But on this one, I haven't quite got enough frets to play the last note. Now move up the chromatic scale and work with F as the keynote. Again, the keynote furthest down the fretboard will be on the sixth string at fret one this time. So we play three octaves up and back. And then I look for the next key note on the fifth string I find here at fret eight. Play my two octaves up and back. find another key note here at fret 13 but I know now that I'm not going to get three octaves in there but nothing to stop me playing a two octave run from there oh apart from the fact that I never practiced that one and so you continue to find the runs in a similar fashion for F sharp. come to the note A and we need to spot that there's an opportunity to find a two octave run off the open fifth string. You'd probably change your fingering for that as you're able to use the open strings. the A here at fret 5 on the 6th string for a 3 octave run. And then we could probably fit another 2 octave run off fret 12 on the A string. A sharp or B flat we can start at fret 1 with a two octave run we can complete a three octave run from fret 6 two octaves from fret 13. B we can start at fret 2. We can get three octaves from fret 7. squeeze in two octaves from fret 14. No 
note C, I can start at fret 3 for two octaves. <laughs> from there. C sharp, I can start at fret 4, 2 octave run, um, fret 9, clear 3 octaves there, and fret 16. two octaves there and then when I come to note D two octaves from fret 5 from fret 10 just about get my third octave because I've got 22 frets on this guitar fret uh, guitars look out you can't get that third octave in the key of D um, yeah we can we get two octaves here I think so and then D sharp or E flat I can get a couple of octaves from fret six my attempt at getting three octaves fails because I run out there having no fret 23. Um, so E flat is the only key I can't get a clear three octave run out of. So that concludes the drill. And one of the realizations that I got from doing this was that there's no real equality between different keys on the guitar. As far as lead guitar playing is concerned, it's generally far more flexible to be playing in keys like E, G and A than it is in keys like C sharp, D and D sharp. And I think after doing this drill, you can see why. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why guitar-based songwriters tend to uh, avoid those keys and stick to more commonly used keys like E, G and A. In the main, there are always exceptions, of course. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd really like to maximise your potential as a guitar player, click on the link in the description below to the Secret Guitar Teacher site. Here, you can sign up for a 30-day trial, free of charge and without obligation. We won't even ask you for your credit card number.